public interest research group stumbled onto a series of emails. They've embarrassed two important institutions in Atlanta, Coca-Cola and the Centers for Disease Control. Channel 2 investigative reporter Richard Belcher says the emails document a cozy relationship on an explosive subject, the crackdown on sugary soft drinks. Physicians and public health experts are in virtually complete agreement on soft drinks like Coke and Pepsi. All that sugar is a critical factor in soaring obesity rates. So why was a renowned public health agency cozying up to the world's most famous soft drink company? We came across the, the interactions between CDC and Coke entirely by accident. It was a total fluke. Gary Ruskin is co-director of California-based U.S. Right to Know, a public interest group which investigates the food industry. Ruskin uses the Federal Freedom of Information Act to pry loose vast stores of government records. He was going through 11,000 pages when... There, right in the middle of it, was this CDC and Coca-Cola thing, and I almost fell off my chair when I saw it. The 2015 emails included exchanges between Alex Malaspina, a former senior VP at Coke, and Barbara Bowman, CDC's then director of the Division for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention. The issue? The proposed crackdown on sugary foods by the World Health Organization. Malaspina wrote, we would want WHO to not only consider sugary foods as the only cause of obesity, but to consider also the lifestyle changes that have been occurring throughout the universe. And this, dear Barbara, any ideas how to have a conversation with WHO? They do not want to work with industry. Who finds all the new drugs? Not WHO, but industry. She is influenced by the Chinese government and is against U.S. Something must be done. Ruskin says there was a clear effort by the soft drink giant to cozy up to the public health giant. So efforts to arrange dinners and efforts to arrange meetings and to, to essentially lobby the CDC in a wide variety of ways. Ruskin says he followed the money. Coca-Cola had actually given more than a million dollars to the CDC Foundation, so there was real money involved, too. CDC has a policy about partnerships with private entities like Coke. It says do not engage when, quote, the potential partner represents any product that exacerbates morbidity or mortality when used as directed. I think that there is a lack of enough information out there about how dangerous added sugars can be in the diet. Newton County pediatrician Dr. Samira Brown says evidence of the dangers of excess sugar is compelling, but not well enough appreciated, especially in lower income communities. There are some teens that will tell you that every single day they see some advertisement for this without that acknowledgement that it actually is dangerous to their health. And what about that chummy relationship between Coke and CDC? I think any organization that is responsible for public health messages that may be unduly you know, influenced by someone who would like to have more added sugar beverage in the diet, that would certainly be a concern. The CDC is supposed to protect the public health of Americans, not protect the finances of Coca-Cola. CDC sent a statement that reads in part, although individual people can make mistakes, CDC's current ethical framework provides the checks and balances needed to keep the agency on track scientifically and ethically. Employees are directed to avoid not only actual conflicts of interest, but also the appearance of conflicts. Coca-Cola sent a statement that notes the emails were written before the company's commitment to disclose funding for scientific research and partnerships, which it does every six months now. Since that time, the company says it has, quote, continued our journey to be a more helpful and effective partner in efforts to address the serious problem of obesity around the world.